Pastor John Butler. And I'm Pastor Melanie Butler. Pastors of Living Water Christian Center Church, located here in Fredericksburg, Virginia, where we're committed to teaching and in planning the infallible Word of God in the receptive hearts of all people. Through sharing the Word, we are destined to meet the spiritual, mental, and physical needs of all people through the practical teaching and application of the Living Word of God. Because as pastors, we relish the call of God to equip and empower the believer to present healing to the hurting, love to the lost, restoration to the backslider, and continued strength to the body of Christ. The result, transforming the individual person, building healthy relationships, strong families and homes, and changing the community for the kingdom of God. Please consider joining us for one of our amazing service opportunities each Sunday morning at 10 a.m., in our Midweek Life in the Word Bible study each Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Join us and be blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He is worthy to be praised. I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I don't care what I'm going through. I will give God His praise because He is worthy. He woke us up this morning. You are here in the sanctuary. You are blessed beyond measure. And it is because of the God we serve. Lord God, we just worship you on today. We give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. Because you are worthy to be praised. Father God, we thank you on this morning. We glorify you, Lord God. Father God, we just thank you for waking us up this morning. Lord God, we thank you for your traveling grace and mercy. Father God, we thank you for just being a God of all things, Lord God. Lord God, you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our worship. And Lord God, on this morning, we just thank you, Lord God. We give you glory. We give you praise. Hallelujah to your name, Lord God. Father God, we come before you this morning humble. Lord God, thanking you just for the very breath that we breathe. Lord God, we thank you because somebody didn't wake up this morning. Father God, but you allowed us to wake up, to come and serve you and worship you on this morning. And for that, Lord God, we are truly grateful. Father God, I pray that LWC3 will continue to be the lighthouse, Lord God, navigating all souls back to you, Father God. I pray for healing. I pray for deliverance, Lord God. Father God, I pray for those who don't know you, Lord God, to come to know you. Father God, I pray that something that we say or do will allow someone to want to know about you, Father God. I pray that our lives will be a lighthouse, Lord God, to your people. Father God, I pray that we will just get to continue to bring those souls into you, Lord God. I pray that LWC3 will accomplish everything that you have purposed for us to accomplish, Lord God. Father God, I pray for you to be the center of our life. Lord God, for if you are our center, Lord God, you will control our focus. So Father God, I pray that everything that we do will be according to your will, your purpose, and your plan for our lives, Lord God. I speak healing over those who are sick, Lord God. I speak deliverance over those who need to be delivered, Lord God, and I speak salvation into the lives that need to be saved, Lord God. I pray that the doors of LWC3 will open up and welcome every soul that walked through that door. Father God, I pray that we will meet, meet every need that they have, Lord God, according to your purpose, Lord God, according to your plan, Lord God. Father God, we lift up the leaders of this nation, Lord God, Father God, we know that they may have a title, but you are in control. Father God, we lift up the local leaders, Lord God, of Fredericksburg, Lord God, of Virginia, Lord God, of the United States of America, Lord God, of the world, Lord God. We lift them up, Lord God, and we pray that they will follow your leadership, Lord God, so that everything will be done in decency and in order, Lord God, so that everything will be done according to your purpose and your plan. Father God, we lift up the leaders of LWC3, Father God. I pray that you will continue to pour into them as they pour into us. Father God, I pray that you will meet every need that they have, Lord God. I call their household blessed, Lord God. Everything that they touch, Lord God, is blessed. Everything that they say, Lord God, is blessed, Lord God. I pray over their finances, Lord God. I pray that you will give them a return tenfold, Lord God, a hundredfold, Lord God. I just pray that you will continue to bless the leaders of this church, Lord God. Father God, and I just pray that we will just continue to be the light. 
Lord God, that we will do the things that you have called us to do. And Father God, I pray this prayer in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Come on and begin to give God glory this morning. Come on and begin to give Him praise.
we love on you this morning. Receive our praise. God, let them be sweet in your Yes, God. I want to look up heaven's way and say, Receive our praise. As we love on you, receive our praise. Because your name is high.
how great he is. Give him the fruit of your lips. Come on, people of God. This is our moment to begin to just, just tell him how good he is. Because he deserves it. you 
Everybody in here has something going on in your life right now. You're dealing with something right now. You're waiting for something right now. You need something right now. Well, there is power in our words. Well, let me remind you of something. The most powerful word that you can come out of your mouth with, dealing with anything that approaches you or anything that it comes into the arena of your life is hallelujah. 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 That praise doesn't belong to you. Give it to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put some praise on your situation. Hallelujah. Whatever you're waiting on, put your praise on it. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 You can't say it enough. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, for your name is great. 
be going through something but if you look back over the Bible story there is something that they did before a mighty move of God and it was their praise and it was their worship so whatever you're going through put a praise on it praise and worship God through your situation no matter what it looks like it works focus on your worship focus on your praise Focus on God and not your situation and watch him move on your behalf. Hallelujah. Glory. We're going to move on with the welcome. Glory. Hallelujah. But please, please continue to give God your praise. Welcome, 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 welcome to Living Water Christian Center Church, a church where Jesus is Lord, a church where Jesus is Lord, and our pastors, Pastor John and Pastor Melanie, are dedicated and committed to teaching and implanting the infallible word of God into the receptive hearts of all, all people, people, regardless of your economic your social or your cultural status, all people. Lottie Dottie. And everybody. Everybody. That's right. That's right. So welcome, 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 welcome. No first time visitors. I'm scanning, I'm scanning, I'm scanning, I'm scanning. No first time. We didn't get their names, but welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us with your awesome, beautiful faces. Thank you for joining us. We're going to love on you a little bit later. Yep, yep, yep. And everybody else, welcome. 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 Look at somebody and tell them, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Wel welcome back, Mama Jones. Welcome back, Mama Jones. Mama back in here. Well, we're going to activate our faith the way we always do about this time. We're going to do it. Everybody, you, everybody's been here before, so you know what this looks like, and you know what this means, okay? So it shouldn't look strange to anybody. Let's wave to our neighbors on the left. What's up, fellas? Let's wave to our neighbors on the right. Hey, voices of praise, divine favor. Let's wave to our neighbors in front of us. Hey, Elder McCormick. Let's wave to our neighbors behind us. Let's wave to our neighbors in the balcony. What's up, y'all? What's Sister Rain say? We got to get some of them from up there. The fire code. We got too many people up there, huh? Let's wave to our neighbors in the overflow. The overflow? It's overflowing. It's overflowing. Amen. Yeah. How about our neighbors running across the parking lot? Come on in. Come on in. Be careful in them heels. 
let's wave to our choir back in the choir in the what is it called the choir loft the choir loft <laughs> let's wave to our choir back there let's wave to divine favor and the voices of praise one more time what's up y'all and last but not least let's wave to our neighbors who are live streaming welcome y'all welcome well, on behalf of Living Water Christian Center Church and our pastors, Pastor John and Pastor Melanie Butler, we pray that you will have an encounter with God that will cause an exciting, everlasting, and unforgettable experience that will impact and inspire you to live in God's perfect plan and God's perfect will for, for your, your life. life. Welcome and, and God, God bless, bless you. you. Amen. Come on, help me celebrate Jesus, if you will. <laughs> Oh, come on, we can do better than that. How many of you know that he's worthy to be praised forevermore? I am going to cut across the field. You know, I'm one of the names on the front door, so I think I can, I can, I can be able to do that. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to get up, if you would, sir or ma'am, and let's take this opportunity to greet one another in the spirit of unity and love. If you would. Come on, let's greet, let's greet, let's greet to our live streaming family. We will be back shortly to pick back up. But welcome once again for being a part of our fellowship. I want to get down here and greet some of these beautiful people. We will be back. See you. coming back it's already back you know I put it out there this morning and, and one of our awesome leaders called it in the spirit she was already there so we thank God for this opportunity to fellowship amen come on help me celebrate Jesus if you will just so good to fellowship amen well I'm just about ready to get into the word but before I get into the word y'all get used to that cut across the field stuff so. I'm cutting across the field again because, as you know, April is a very special month uh, for our household. 
um, tends to be a bit expensive. So, you know, for me, I got to put that stuff in the budget. You know, on top of everything else, I got to make sure to take, take, I'm taking care of because God blessed me with a wife. He blessed me with children. And so, you know, I do what fathers should be doing. I take care of my family. Trust me. There ain't no questions there. I'll take care of my family. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. I learned to take care of them before I learned to take care of y'all. No. Don't get it twisted. Only person come between me and my wife is God. And then I ask him for a warning. Because I got to deal with the aftermath. But he blessed me with her. She just happened to be from another country. She ain't illegal, but she, 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 she's, a, she, she's an immigrant. Okay, Sister Marcine, I know that you're from the island. Got the island up in here, boy. Hey, man. Why you say, brother? Iry, bro. But back to my original soliloquy, April is a pretty celebratory month for me. Jemai, will you come here for a minute, sweetie? Yeah, she looked like she just rolled up and came on up here. Trust me, her mom checked her, but she celebrated her 23rd birthday on Friday. Oh, Lord. She is our, our baby. By the time we got to her, we was nice and experienced. So, you know, she got, she got the backside of mom and dad. Uh, so we celebrate her. She turned 23. She's graduating from VCU next month. She gets commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Army on the 13th. So why am I saying all of that? That's the official farewell from my pocketbook. I, what what that song say? Uh, bye bye, huh? no. so long bye bye. Mm. So we celebrate her uh, after church. We're gonna take her take her to dinner because y'all, she had to mitigate it gall to decide, uh, Sister Natalie, that she was gonna spend her birthday with her friends as opposed to her parents. Yeah. Now there's there there's the rest of the story. I said, they must be some type of friends to have if she chose to spend that time with her friends and press pause on me and Pastor Melanie for like two days later. But we just celebrate her uh, this month. Stay right there. Not only that, but it's Pastor Mel's birthday coming up. Will you come on? It is, you know, there, there is a, okay, you know. Y'all see what I have to deal with? Now, I will tell you, there is a story behind this. And I brought them up on stage so that you will know. Because between Jemiah and Joshua is eight years. Between Jemiah and Jacob, our middle son, is six years. We were stationed in Panama in the 90s and she was prophesied. Because Pastor Mellon and I, we thought we were done with Joshua and Jacob. And then a trip to the altar with the prophet said, no, there's one more. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And not only that, but Pastor Melanie asked me, she said, when do you want your baby? Only time she'd been my baby. When, when do you want your baby to be born? I said, I want an April baby. And she said, well, we got to get busy. And I was happy. <laughs> Because we started putting into practice what God told us to do. <laughs> Be fruitful and multiply. And so that's exactly what happened. And she was born on April 12th. Pastor Melanie's birthday is the 26th. But here's the reason why I brought her up here. Because this is a surprise to her. She doesn't know it. But on next Sunday... Right here, immediately following service, we as a church family are going to celebrate Pastor Melanie. 
We're going to we're going to celebrate her. Um, you don't have to do anything but show up. Uh, between Sister Rain and Sister Victoria, everything's already taken care of. And so we're coming next Sunday to celebrate her. Uh, she's a little older than I am. So, so when I get to the age, I always ask her, how's that age feel? But so if you would just join us on next Sunday, it's free. You don't have to pay anything. That's already taken care of. We're going to celebrate her on next Sunday. Amen. So help me celebrate her once again as I celebrate the ladies in, <laughs> in my life. Love you. Now I got to get to the word. Y'all waiting. But at this time, we're going to excuse uh, TRC, if you could. Uh, Minister Lee is waiting for you in the back. Amen. But I'm ready to get into the word. Praying that you all had a blessed week. Um, blessed week. I want, I want to drop this nugget, nugget here. Don't ever allow anything to interfere with your praise and your worship. I just want to put that plug there. That's one of the things the Holy Spirit dropped in me as we were going through praise and worship. So I want you to to keep that at the forefront of of your life as as we transition through life. Uh, That didn't go over too well. I didn't get too many hallelujahs after that. Don't feel bad. The praise team, I didn't get no hallelujahs either. But we just want to make sure that we are keeping everything in its, its proper uh, perspective when it comes to our praise and worship. I understand that life happens. Trust me, I do. Trust me, I know. But make sure that you are keeping your praise and your worship intact. Make sure that that is, that is, that is so key, which is a precursor to actually the word that we are going to share with you on today. So we're going to do what we're going to pray, make our preceding word confession, and then we're going to get right into the word. I really don't have, well, let me say this, not on paper. I don't have a whole heap, as they say. How many of you ever heard that word before? Hey, whole heap. Y'all from the country? A whole heap to present contextual as relates Uh, To my notes, I got two passages of scripture that I want us to spend a little bit of time in uh, for the teaching on today. And I just want to just want to encourage you as we bring foundational principle number two to a peaceful conclusion on today. And contrary to popular belief, you need to know that your value and your worth to God. Your value and your worth to God should not be dictated by the degree of circumstance and situations that you face in your life. I want you to know this. It's one of the things that he wanted me to to emphasize uh, in in the teaching on today. And I want to show you through two examples. Because one of the things that you need to know is that how many of you have experienced something in your life? I want to see your hands. You, you've experienced something. This next question, how many of you have experienced the highs of life? But then you've also experienced the not so highs of life. How many of you know that whichever side you may have found yourself on, God is more than capable to doing something with it? Doing something with our experience. Amen? Amen. I want you to see this in the scripture as we share this with you from Peter's perspective and from Paul's perspective. Because in Galatians chapter 3, Paul had to set some things right. And the reason why he had to set some things right is because the word that he had shared with them, somebody came on and began to pollute that word. And it ran interference with their belief or their ability to continue to operate by faith. In other words, you can't allow people, circumstances, and situations to ever cause you to forfeit your faith. I got one witness. Uh, uh, Brother Randall, just keep on playing right there. 
We go, we go stay. No, I'm we're going to stay there for the for the rest of the service. Amen. So we're ready to make our ready to pray and then make our proceeding word confession. Then we're going to get right into the word. Amen. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for this welcomed opportunity, Lord God, to just spend time with you through this venue. God, we thank you that on today, God, that you have purposely given us the word for your people on today. And God, we just honor you for it. God, we thank you for the power of your anointing and the Holy Spirit's presence, Lord God, that is very skilled at penetrating, Lord God, parts of us, Lord God, that presents the opportunity for you to make a difference. Father, I pray that on today that whatever situation is represented in this room, is represented, Lord God, through our virtual footprint, Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that nothing stands in the way of your word. Father, I pray that this word would be on a hunt, Lord God, to annihilate anything that represents the opposite of your word, Lord God, that's received by faith. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would just lead us and guide us as we transition through your word. And as always, Father God, we ask, that your word come forth with clarity, that it comes forth with understanding. God, that we believe you that irreparable damage is done to our ignorance on today. Father, break up, Lord God, this ground, Lord God. Tear down walls, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that permits us to see you for who you are. Knowing, Lord God, that you've echoed in your word on multiple, multiple occasions, that God, there's nothing that's too hard for you. And Father, I pray, Lord God, that as we find ourselves in this world, you create the, the platform, the opportunity, Lord God, in our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our spirits. Father God, to purpose, Lord God, to not only to hear this word, but to become an active doer of your word. Father, that we can represent the change that you desire for us to manifest, Lord God. And we just honor you and thank you in advance for your word going forth. And accomplishing its intended purpose. God, you said in Isaiah 55, Lord God, that your word would not return unto you void. It would not return unto you empty. But it would prosper in the things where to you sent it, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that it's going to accomplish your intended purpose. God, we ask this in the matchless mighty and the majestic name of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God said, amen. Well, let's make our, our preceding work confession. Amen. Are you ready? Are we ready? It's quiet up in here. It's really, we still worship it. It's quiet up in here. Let's make our preceding word confession. Are you being blessed by it? I know that I am. And it simply says what? God, I thank you for the word I'm about to hear. This word has the power to change my situation. And life, and life forever. And therefore, and therefore I, declare I declare and decree. I am what the word says I am. I can accomplish what the word says I can accomplish. I declare and decree, declare and decree that the seed of this word, of this word will, fall will fall on good ground and produce a harvest in me. Harvest in I, declare and decree, I declare and decree your words, your words dictate my words. And my life. So your will is done in me and through me. I declare and decree that through this word, faith will come. I will grow. I'm transformed. I'm delivered. I'm healed. I'm restored. I'm an overcomer. I'm set free forever. Now, God, grant me the strength, courage, and wisdom. To live your word. May your divine presence guide me as I spread the light and truth of your word to others with love, clarity, knowledge, and understanding through your demonstration in my life that you will be glorified. Amen. Come on, help me celebrate him if you will. Glory to your name, God. In this week's episode of Did You Catch 
that. You're going to see if you caught it. I want to make sure that you caught it. The first thing I want to share with you, which is pretty much an extension of where we have been worshiping at all morning. I want you to understand this. Every life circumstance and situation is designed to produce a natural and spiritual harvest. Uh Uh-oh. I want you to see this. Every life circumstance and situation is designed, say it's designed, to produce a natural and spiritual harvest. In other words, when something comes into the arena of your life, you need to make sure that its presence there is designed to produce a purpose. Are you with me? Which means this, there are some times we can get so lost in what we're going through that we don't see how blessed we really are. That we don't see how blessed we are. In other words, this helps me to set conditions as to how I look at what I'm currently dealing with. Because for the born again believer that's been influenced by the word, we have to make sure that as we proceed forward and move through life circumstances and situations, we're not leading ourselves. Making sure that we are led by Father God and the power of his influence in our life. Amen? And the reason why that is important is because if not, it can cause you to lose your sanctity. Whew. It can cause you to forfeit your praise and your worship. It can cause you to forfeit your prayer time. It can cause you to forfeit your word time. So that's why we have to understand this in the proper context. The second thing that I want to make sure that you caught is that life circumstances and situations can be our classroom. Can be our classroom. A derivative of this is, I am convinced that until breath leaves my body, I'm going to be a lifelong learner. I am going to be a lifelong learner and stay in the classroom as long as I need so that I can get what the classroom lesson is designed to produce in my life. Now watch this. How many of you have gone to college before? One of the things that you get as it relates to your schedule or going into a new semester, you get what? A schedule. You adjust your life based on the schedule that you get. Now, when you get into the classroom, the professor gives you something else, which is called what? A syllabus. The reason why we get those tools is to help make sure that we know what's coming up and when it's coming up so that we can stay abreast. In other words, they designed that for a specific reason for your learning so that you come into a block of instructions or a class and they lay it out so that by the end of the class, your learning is not the same as it was when you walked in that classroom. It's the same thing with Father God, except for the fact that you ain't getting no handed out schedule telling you everything that's going on. You got to operate on that schedule by faith. Come on. Uh-oh. You have to operate on that by faith. And like a schedule that you get in a classroom, you know that on the 15th of May, this class is over. And you can begin to transition to the next topic that's a part of your curriculum. But according to the classrooms of God, sometimes you may not have an immediate end date for what that class is designed to produce in your life. Sometimes it takes some people a little bit longer to get it. Uh Uh-oh. Let me keep moving. Help me, Jesus. Where Pastor Mel at? (laughs) Here's the third thing. Those who love God can trust his goodness, his power, and his will to work all things for our good. In other words, we're on this journey together. 
We are on this journey together. Now let's get to where I, where I want to go. Looking at Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 26. That's where we're going to start. I want to reiterate last week and then we're going to move forward with new information. Still giving you the purpose of kingdom domain and demonstration. This is point number two. The part to highlight out of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 is he said, let them have dominion. Let them have authority. Let them have dominion and let them have what? Authority. Focus on that. Let them have dominion and let them have authority. Let them have dominion and let them have authority. Let them have dominion and let them have authority. Who are the them? You better say it. You got to say it like you mean it. Let them have dominion and let them have what? Authority. I'm going to give you this now and I'll deal with it a little, little later. As born again believers, one of the luxuries that we have in being a follower of Christ is that only thing we have to do is do. The only thing we have to do sister is do because when he said let them have he did not renege on his word in other words if you don't know what you have you can't properly steward and use what you have and sometimes we don't get the benefit of properly stewarding what we have because we don't know what we have in other words there are times when something may come into the arena of your life what's the first thing that you do how do you react? How does it change your psyche? How does it change uh, how you proceed in life? Have you ever had those situations that popped up and threw your whole day off? You, you ever had those? Lord, I woke up and I wasn't expecting that. But guess who knew about it? You absolutely right. And the difference is, is that when it pays you a visit, and it's come into the arena of your life, all of a sudden your dominion and your authority is not forfeited because of this situation. It's amplified even the more. Because we exercise the power and authority that God has given us in his word. I woke up on a Saturday morning before we came to early morning, Saturday morning prayer. And many of you that was here, I shared with you what I woke up to. I didn't plan on waking up to that. Absolutely not. Well, you should have been here Saturday praying. You would know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but for those who were here, after that experience, but when I, when I had the experience, my mind was on what I was dealing with, but it wasn't going to keep me from coming to Saturday prayer. The devil is a liar. Because when I showed up here, the power of God's anointing was here and it rested on everybody that was in here. And I got a word. God used the people in the circle that was here to give me a life changing word. Wait a minute, Pastor, somebody gave you. You absolutely right. They did. I said, I will deal with this after we get done with Saturday prayer. And then after Saturday prayer, me and Pastor Mel headed to the ER. But the fact of the matter is, just because there's something present in your life doesn't mean that you forfeit God's ability to impact you through that situation. Yeah. Here's where I'm going. I want you to see this because foundational principle number two, we told you to exercise God's divine delegation and authority. Don't miss this. I want you to see this. Because we got a part to play to exercise God's divine delegation and authority to make a kingdom impacting and unforgettable difference in our life and in the life of others. Are you seeing this? Can I read it on this side? I don't know if it's the same this side or this side, so I'm going to read it over here. I think it might be different over here. 
to exercise God's divine delegation and authority to make a kingdom impacting and unforgettable. Say unforgettable. unforgettable. Come on, say it again. Say it one more time. Did we say it three times? Yeah. Father, son, okay, that's it. <laughs> no, don't miss this. Don't miss this. You go, I want you to see this on today. Because some of you are discounting what you've been through. Some of you are discounting some of the things that's paid you a visit in your life. But God wants to make this unforgettable. Yeah. Man, there are some things that happened to me that I won't forget. How many of you had a near-death experience before? Trust me, I've had multiple ones. Multiple ones. Try having a high altitude entanglement over Sicily drop zone after you just came out of a perfectly good aircraft. Trust me, my sisters are here. Try having carbon monoxide poisoning as a child. I've been there, done that. When I woke up, I was in the hospital. My mom and my dad was praying over me. I think I may have been eight years old. Back to back, <laughs> y'all, back to back, near life taking accidents in the same spot, three weeks apart, as a 17 year old. Trust me, can you put that back up there, sister, sister, who back there, Elder Davis? To exercise God's divine delegation and authority to make a kingdom impacting and unforgettable difference in our life and in the lives of others. In other words, it's you first, then you can impact somebody else's life. It's us first. It's us first. It has to be unforgettable to us. I've had plenty of opportunities to be upset, angry, mad, dejected, disgusted, and all these other things with Father God because things didn't go the way that I wanted them to go. But how many of you know he had something greater? This is how we evangelize. This is how we make a kingdom impacting difference. John 10 and 10, he said that uh, he came that we might have what? Life. And that we might have it more abundantly. Let me get to where I got to go. Because there's three things I want you to, to take away today. And you may not get the whole thing on today, but I want you to see this. Because this is just where the Holy Spirit has had me tarrying. Man, could not get this thing, could not get this thing out of me. Here's the first thing. I want you to walk, walk with me on this one. This morning's teaching, I want and I hope, accomplishes a couple things. The first thing that I want us to understand is that we need to remove the fight and struggle out of our walk with God. We need to remove the fight and struggle, watch this, out of our walk with God to demonstrate his best to us. Ooh. In other words, we've got to practice, Mother Jones, getting rid of the butts out of our life. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, follow me on this one. <sighs> Take the fight and struggle out of it. Take the fight and struggle out of it. Take it out. And here, here, here's what I mean, because I don't want you guys to fall victim to what I fell victim to. And I, I said it earlier, when things wasn't going my way, man, I caught a tood with God. Can I say that now? They still say that? I caught a tood with Father God. Man, and I was, just a, I was justifying my toods too. You know, you gave me this child to act like this, I should have left him in the womb. <laughs> this ain't the child I prayed for. Matter of fact, like, like Pastor Mill, I wrote my prayers down. This is what I prayed for right here. Where did I miss it? That ain't the job I wanted. Now, you know I asked you for that thing. And I, 
And, and I was praying hard too, whatever that means. I was praying hard. I mean, I was just praying hard and, and, and hard as, as hard can hard can be. I was praying hard. My knees was hurting. I was down there for so long. But take the struggle and the fight out of our walk with God. Because watch this. Everything that we already need, he has all ready provided. Sometimes we're asking God for things that are already yours. But when we don't have relationship with the word, we don't know it. God says, wait a minute. Uh, you know, you already have that. You do know I, I already told you that. I told you that in 2 Peter chapter 1. As a matter of fact, we're going to go there. I've already told you in 2 Peter chapter 1, I've given you everything that pertains to life and what? Godliness. I've given it to you. I've given it to you. When we remove the fight and struggle, we can focus on kingdom impact. We can focus on kingdom impact. I told you this before. Whatever controls your focus controls your life. Whatever controls your focus controls your life. And in the best interest of stewardship, from a matter of relationship perspective, Pastor Melanie can focus in on what I didn't do as opposed to all the other things that I did do. Yeah, but uh uh-uh, you didn't take the trash out. I walked in the house and I smelled last night's dinner in the trash. You know what I had to do? I had to, you know, go through the house spread and all this other stuff. If you would have just taken out the trash, I wouldn't have had to do all that. I wouldn't have had to do all that. Why didn't you just take the trash out? Especially like in our bathroom. Why didn't you just take the trash out? Well, I have that. Three quarters of that stuff in there ain't mine. That's your stuff. That's your stuff. But okay. Or one she used to, oh, can I go there? Y'all know I love y'all. Or one that she used to do, you know, Pastor Melanie came up like a little military B-R-A-T. Literally. Had her daddy wrapped around her fingers. I mean, that country joker would give, he may not have ever tapped her in her whole life. Mm Mm-hmm. And he took it to the PX and bought anything she wanted after that. I know that experience because I did it to my daughter. But anyway, popped that head and was like, ooh, I was crushed. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I just want you to love me. What, what do you want? Couldn't even have candy like that. We walking down the candy aisle. But Pastor Melody had this affinity. Y'all know what, uh, what those 90-degree military curves on the bed are? Hospital foes, that's what they call them. I ain't doing that. I'm going to tuck that sheet up in there and have a nice day. Ain't nobody going to see it anyway because it's the, the, the comforter covering everything. She said, but I know it wasn't done. <laughs> Why can't you just do it right? She getting it rocking, y'all. But, but like, yeah, she getting it rocking. <laughs> what did you say? But take the, f- you see how you're laughing? Come on. Yeah. You see that? That's taking the struggle out of our walk with God. It's not doom and gloom. Right. It's that victory that the praise team was talking about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's about. I'm sharing with you what he wanted me to share with you as it relates to foundational principle number two. Some of us, the glass is always half empty. Right. No. Kingdom impacting and unforgettable. Are you with me? The second thing that I hope that we're able to do on today is to help us to see clearly, watch this, that no matter how hard we try, our self-efforts, say self-efforts, our self-efforts can't compare to God's capability of being who he already is in all of us. Can I say that one again? (sighs) To help us to clearly see that no matter how hard we try, and we can burn some calories trying to, but how many of you always trying to help God do something? (laughs) 
Try, always, try, always trying to help him. I'm not saying in the right circumstances and situation that doesn't add value. But I'm talking about self-efforts. Our self-efforts can't compare to God's capabilities of being who he already is in us. Say already. already. You just got to tap into the already. It can't compare. Self-efforts are self-centered and represent more of us than God. In other words, through my efforts, I can help God better than he can help me himself. <sighs> Let me show you this. Look at, um, look at Galatians chapter 3. This is where I want to go. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. I want you to, I want you to see this. Now I'm going to begin reading at verse number one, um, yeah, verse number one. But here, Paul had already came through, Sister Amber, and shared with them the gospel message of Jesus Christ. He had already ministered to them, taking an extensive amount of time to share with them the cornerstone of their faith. Are you with me? And they had received it. Because what you have going on here is, well, you know what? That saved by grace and faith thing in Ephesians chapter 2, okay, that's good. But I still have the law right here. And he had to change and restructure some things because the law represented their doing by faith represented his doing and when we embrace that mentality it allows us to experience unabated freedom in our life to know that the only thing we've got to do is receive by faith Boy, he's shifting gears on that one, boy. <laughs> Let him shift. It's a whole lot of shifting going on there. Ain't like he driving the 18 wheeler boy with all them gears. <laughs> Let, him, Let him keep shifting. But the thing is, is that he had shared this with them. And here, the same thing I'm sharing with you is that you've got to make sure that our experience is unforgettable. Why is it not being unforgettable so important? Because sometimes we can miss or we can miss out on the full effects of something that we're transitioning through because we simply don't remember. That's right. <sighs> mm. Unforgettable means, Brother E, that I understand the hurts sometimes of what I had to deal with. But now, sometimes we're more adept to focusing on the hurt than the benefits of the hurt. Yeah. Woo. Woo. When the hurt was a part of the benefits. Yeah. Because sometimes we don't appreciate what we have until we don't have it. But when you get in those moments where something may have been removed and you remember what it was like and you determine I'm never going back there again. Can I give you another personal example? Pastor Mel and I had a situation. I told you I'm telling all her business. Pastor Mel and I had a situation in the house where one of our pipes had come loose. The contractor didn't do what they were supposed to. Didn't put the glue around the return line. And next thing we know, we woke up to, well, we was leaving. And Pastor Mel and heard nothing but water gushing out in the basement. And so we're having to, we're having to go through this. But how many of you know? Whew. God had already made provisions. Right. That if he allows something to come into the arena of your life, he has purpose wrapped up in it. We didn't have any struggles there. 
But buddy, when we had to do personal hygiene out of a pan of water. Now, I grew up like that, so that wasn't foreign to me. Unlike some people, that silver spoon wasn't tasting so good right about now. She like, what the ham sandwich going on here? But we adapted. But let me tell you something. That made me so appreciate being able to go in the bathroom and turn that water on and it be there. We make it so that it's, un, it's unforgettable and has that impact. Galatians chapter 3, are you there? Watch this. Look at how Paul structures this, birthday girl, so that they can understand this in, in the context. And this is what God is saying to us. Uh-oh. Do you not remember how far I brought you? Wait a minute. Do you not know what I've allowed you to come through? Do you not know that things that you came through took other people out? They didn't make it. But listen to what he says here in verse number one. He says, oh, foolish and thoughtless and superficial Galatians, who has bewitched you? That you would act like this to whom right before your very eyes, here it is, Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified in the gospel message. In other words, I was living this out before you. The standard was set. How in the world did you let some upstart come in here to cause you to start thinking or believing different? Uh Uh-uh. Verse 2. This is all I want to ask of you. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as a result of obeying the requirements of the law? Uh Uh-oh. This was a righteous jack-up right here. Or was it the result of hearing the message of salvation and with faith believing it? Are you with me? Are you seeing this? And of course, we know what the answer is, but listen to this, to his, his discourse here. He says, have you suffered? What verse am I on? Four. Are you sure we're on four? We're on three. Look at y'all trying to get me to skip over where I want to go. Are you so foolish and sen- senseless, having begun your new life by what? Faith with the spirit. Are you now being perfected and reaching spiritual maturity by what? The flesh. Whew. That is by your own works and efforts to keep the law. Why are you trying to keep something that you can't keep unless you're doing it in your flesh? In other words, why are you allowing a fight to go on as long as you are allowing the fight to go on? Well, you know what happiness is all about. Oh, Jesus. I can't be empty in here next Sunday. Mm -mm. Be like our online presence. No, I want you to see this. This is so important. Now what verse am I on? Okay, thank you. Have you suffered so many things and experienced so much all for what? Nothing? Notice what he said there, experienced. Experienced. Say experienced. This is where I'm going. Are you seeing this? Uh, Can I say that again? Have you suffered too many things and experienced so much all for what? Nothing? If indeed it was all for nothing? In other words, what you have experienced when I share the gospel message of Jesus Christ to you should mean something. Not only should it mean something, but the meaning of something should cause transformation to take place in your life based on what you know. 
In other words, how long are you going to sound like a weather report, fair and partly cloudy? Or are you going to get to experiencing the goodness of God and what he's already blessed you with? Sometimes we're so focused on what we lost. When the beauty of what we have is already in our hand. It's right here. Lord, he left me. Lord, she left me. Man, that, that might have been a good thing. Oh, but you are so sure about that one. Oh, my God. You was ready to bring that one home to mama and daddy. Woo. Woo. Mm-hmm. So sure that was the one. Crying and everything. Oh, Lord. God had a different plan. And the thing is, is that he showed you the plan before he showed you the plan. Yeah. And thank God that you had enough sense and relationship with him to know that he moved him out of the life for a reason. Why do you think you were seeing what you were seeing when you saw it, when you saw it at the time that you saw it? <sighs> Get out of the butler house. Verse 5. <laughs> so then... Does he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit and works miracles huh, among you do it as a result of the works of the law which you perform or because you believe confidently in the message which you have heard with what? Faith. Yeah. Am I going to believe my self-efforts and try to make something happen, or am I going to activate my faith and stand on the promises that he's already made to me? This requires you to burn more natural calories. This requires you to burn spiritual calories. In other words, reinforcing and fortifying your faith through prayer, fasting, and the word. Because over here, you get the glory. You get the trophy. Yeah. You get the plaque. You get to gloat in your accomplishments. Over here, Father God gets all the glory. Yeah. And it's here that the unforgettable experience is going to impact you and somebody else. Right. Because the story over here is all about you and what you did. Right. Right. Child, let me tell you what I did this week. Huh? But over here, it's all about, let me tell you something. I was down to my last. Come on. Things didn't work out the way I wanted things to work out for me. The doctor told me that I wasn't going to survive. They called the family in and everything else. But over here, he made it so unforgettable that the only person that's going to get the glory is him. Yeah. That's what you can take to somebody else. And here's the third thing. And we're going to move. So apparently I'm not going to get to it. Thank you all very much. Next week's preparation is easy because it's already done. But here's the third thing. And you know, I, I love this. Let me grab this again. I thought I was done, but I want to let me come to this side. <sighs> here's the third thing. Now, next week, this will be your did you catch that? All right. I'm just going to cheat and just tell you. Sister Lanika, one of the only ones I've seen taking pictures, so I know she got it. But anyway, Mother Jones over here writing. I'm trying to go back. Okay. Here's the third one. Are you ready for this? Sister Victoria, watch this. When we exercise his divine delegation and authority, <laughs> say the result. the result. Say the result. The result. Will. Oh, just result. I, I got the rest. <laughs> they about to follow me on this. Oh, no. Y'all want to repeat this? Let's repeat this. Okay. When we exercise his divine delegation and authority, the result will 100% of the time be kingdom impacting and unforgettable. 
when we exercise his divine delegation and authority, Genesis 1.26, the result will 100% of the time be kingdom impacting and unforgettable. It will be kingdom impacting and unforgettable. In other words, it gives you an experience. Now, I will tell you, this can sometimes come through some pretty traumatic experiences. I want you to understand this. All this is not not a bed of flowers. You don't believe me? Go read Acts chapter 27. You don't believe me? Go read the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you don't believe me, go look at all the martyrs that the apostles had experienced. But guess what? That situation left an indelible mark as to how we got this. It's unforgettable. When we allow God to work through us to manifest his will and word, this is when the result will 100% of the time be kingdom impacting and unforgettable. The unforgettable means we allow the impact to become a part of our Christian life fabric. I understand the loss that I went through, but I understand the gain that God has given me as a result of it. Go look at Job's story. Go look at his story. This is what I'm trying to encourage you. You have your own story. You have your own walk. You have your own experience. Don't allow it to be for nothing. If people only knew what it took for you to get to where you are, they'll look at you a little bit different. If they knew some of the H E L L that you went through to get to where you are, they might treat you a little bit different. Have a little bit more appreciation for your story. If you know what walks through those doors on Sunday, if you know what people fight through to get here, depression, oppression, and all these other things, mental illness, all these things just to get through that door. Old people used to say they had to press their way. That's why I was saying earlier, don't allow anything to cause you to minimize your praise and your worship because that's how you come out of these things. Uh Uh-uh. I'm not focusing on what I left on the other side of that door because when I get back, it may still be there. But while I'm coming in the house of the Lord, I'm in the presence of God. Divine favor, give me all that I can stand. Voice of praise, give me all that I can stand. You've been preparing all week so that I can praise my way out of my situation. I can praise my way out of what I'm going through. That's how that thing becomes unforgettable. That's how that thing becomes life transforming and impacting the kingdom. That's a story that you can tell. And sometimes the reality, you're walking right back out there, but you're walking out different. You're fortified now. You're more empowered. You've had an encounter with God that strengthened your spirit, man. That I can walk through this thing. (sighs) Jeff, high five the person to your left and to your right and tell them to be encouraged. Tell them this too shall pass. On the other side of this uh, is a praise and a victory that you're going to, you need to experience like never before. Hmm. Mama, to God be the glory. Mm. Now I'll give you that next Sunday. We're going to pick up right back here. Oh, but I wanted you to be encouraged on today. Mama, Mama, you need to be encouraged. 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 You need to know that Father God is there. He's haven't forgot about you. He's right there in your corner. He's not giving up on you. You need to know that he's there. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. We're not digressing in anything. We are progressing. The God that we serve is real. Mm -mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Ain't no war is me in my life no more. The devil is a liar. No, 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 no. Because if you want to be kept in a classroom, he's going to make sure that you get all you can get. 
but it may require a little bit more praying, a little bit more fasting, a little bit more time in his word. Going into your house and praying and creating an atmosphere that everybody can. No, 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 no. This ain't happening in here today. Grades are turning around in this house. No, we're getting rid of all this stuff. Uh-uh, uh-uh. We're changing, the, we're changing the playlist. We're changing all of that. No, we're changing everything. We're changing the atmosphere. Absolutely not. I'm not going back to what I left. Uh-uh. I am going back, but I'm going back different. Stop speaking that negativity over you and your family. You declare God's best for your life. Mm -mm. Absolutely not. This experience is designed to be kingdom impacting and unforgettable for you and for others. Why do you think Pastor Mel and I are so fluid at telling our testimony? Or sharing the content of our life with you because we've been there and done that one. Yeah. <sighs> Tell me, I don't know what it's like for the TV to be cut off. Or the phone to be cut off. Yeah. Back then, we didn't have cell phones. Yeah. Mm -mm. No. Right. Drive around with quarters in, your, in the ashtray of your car so if you have to make a phone call, you can pull over and make a phone call. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. Trust me. And the kingdom impact in an unforgettable piece of that is in the power of your testimony mm, that you can encourage other people that this too shall pass that the same God that did it for me Mother Jones, oh he can do it for you Pastor Mel ain't the first one that's been diagnosed with cancer and came through, no mm -mm. But there's a whole lot of people that got her same diagnosis they're no longer here Mm. Ah, say self let's appreciate the journey no matter how hard it gets we know by faith Father God is right there with us come and help me celebrate Jesus if you will he's worthy to be praised ah forevermore God we bless you we honor you, God. Mm. All the experiences wasn't the greatest experiences, Father God, but you were still there. And you didn't abandon us. You see the tears, you see the hurt, you see the pain. God, you do. God, we just ask you to continue to encourage your people through this word. Remind them of their first love. Remind them of the love and care that Jesus has for us. That even in the bleakest of bleakest situations, Father God, you're still there. Help us to trust you in the process. God, as we honor you now, we thank you for our victory. And we bless you for being the great God that you are and helping us to move forward in your plan, your purpose, and your will, Lord God, for our lives. Oh, Father, we continue to lean and depend on you. We continue, we continue to lean and depend, Lord God, that your perfect plan and your perfect will, Lord God, that it would be done. And God, we always pray for someone who may not know Jesus Christ, that Lord and personal Savior. God, we lift them up before you right now, asking you, Father God, to just touch and move right now whether they're here in the sanctuary, Lord God, or maybe joining us virtually. Lord God, just remind them that you still care. God, that you haven't abandoned us. God, that you still love us. And that you're married to the backsliders. God, that you're committed to us. And that your plan still reigns supreme. God, but we have to submit to your will and to your way. And Father, we just thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We pray, Father God, that your will has been done. In our efforts, Lord God, to communicate what we believe is a word from you. Father, that you would be glorified. We thank you. We thank you. We honor you. We praise you now. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Come and help me celebrate him, if you will. He's worthy to be praised forevermore. Glory to your name, God. Awesome word. Thank you for that encouraging word. It was something I truly believe that we needed. Mm -hmm. You know, just change the atmosphere of where you are at. If you don't want that atmosphere to be the same way, we have to do something about it. But we have the power and we have the authority. Speak life into dead situations. Yes. We have the power. Heavenly Father, on today, we lift you up and we thank you for this word that we received. Yes, God. We thank you, Father God, because this word came to encourage us, Father God, the situation that we are faced with. But Father God, I thank you for the God in us that we have the strength, the ability, Father God, to speak life into that situation, Father God, that was dead. That situation that looks doom, it looks gloom. But Father God, I thank you that we can speak life to it. We have the power, we have the authority. Yes, God. And Father God, I thank you that we are going to exercise it. And Father God, we thank you for each and every person who heard this word on today. We thank you, Father God, that it has fallen on good ground. Yes, God. And I thank you we're going to walk in it. And as we leave from this place, but never from your presence, I pray that you would continue to keep us, lead us, and guide us. And we ask for all this in your son Jesus' name. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. Until the next time, we pray that you have a blessed and wonderful day. See you on Wednesday. Well, family, we have come to the close of another word opportunity. And once again, thank you for sharing this moment with us. Join us each week as we seek to hear from God through the effect of teaching, hearing and understanding of his word. Until the next time, remember, Jesus is Lord. God's word is true. And the Holy Spirit's active presence in our life is always a difference maker. Be blessed.